Hi guys, uh, all you pet chaps who have my books or have watched my videos know that I talk about the man behind the gun. So that's what my books concentrate on. Today I'm going to have a change of tack. I'm going to talk about the man behind the medal. And we're talking about the Anglo-Boer War of 1899-1902. And like all campaigns, at the end of the war, soldiers were awarded a medal. Now very briefly, the Boers uh, declared war on, on Great Britain. That was the greatest army in the world in those days. There were only 90,000 odd Boers who actually ever fought for the two Boer republics. They reckon there were never more than 40,000 in the field. And of those, 35,000 were taken prisoner of war. They were sent to the likes of India, Ceylon, St Helena, Bermuda, etc. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, campaign medals for both the British and the Boers. Initially, I'll talk about the British medals. Now, the British order of precedence and the British uh, medal system is fairly complex. They have uh, orders, they have decorations, they have campaign medals, they have coronation medals and unofficial medals. What I'm going to talk about today is basically campaign medals. That's all I'm going to concentrate on. And we'll kick off with the with British medals. Uh, Queen Victoria was uh, obviously uh, the reigning monarch during the Boer War. And they actually came up with the Queen's South Africa medal, which is often called the QSA by collectors. And for the uh, object of this particular video, I'll be referring to it as the QSA. Now, the front of the medal, or the obverse, is Queen Victoria. And at the back of the medal is, uh, is a lovely design of uh, Britannia with uh, troops marching in the background and warships out in Table Bay. Uh, the, there were four actual versions of this particular medal that were struck. And I'll go through those. The first one was uh, exactly like this, except at the back of the medal there were two raised dates, 1899 to 1900. When the British realised that the war was still going on uh, in 1901, they very cleverly had the, the rear of the medal, uh, the dates, machined off. So they were machined off uh, and it became known as the Ghost Date QSA. And the reason it was called a Ghost Date is because when the medal tarnishes, as you can see this one has done, being a silver medal, uh, if you look at the back with the reverse of the medal, uh, when it's tarnished you can just see the slight date of 1899-1900. So although it was machined off, the evidence of the date was still there, and they're actually very interesting. That was the second uh, edition of the medal. Now the third version of the medal was when the British actually made a completely new die for the rear of the medal with the reverse. The arm of Britannia was moved slightly, and uh, there was no date at all. It was, it was made without the date. So that was the third version. The fourth version of the QSA was a bronze medal. And these bronze medals were actually uh, initially awarded to Indian troops. Now the Indians didn't actually fight in South Africa as a unit, but many of them served uh, in, attached to British units as batmen and that sort of thing. Lord Roberts had his own batman, a very smart looking Indian gentleman. And they were mainly given the QSA in bronze and it was also given to certain non-combatants. They're actually very rare and don't often come on the market. So that was the QSA, as I said, four different variations of the medal. Having spoken about the four different variations of the Queen's South Africa medal, uh, one of the most important things I must talk about are the various clasps that were issued with this medal. Now, it's quite a fascinating subject on its own and obviously a very interesting um, item for collectors. There were 26 different clasps issued for this medal. You couldn't actually be awarded 26 clasps to one particular man. Most of the guys got two clasps, three clasps, four clasps. Some got 10, very few, but some actually did get 10. Now, the clasps involved here, there were five state clasps, they're called, Cape Colony, Orange Free State, Transvaal, Natal, Rhodesia, uh, were the, the various states. So those were some of the bars. There were two uh, date bars, South Africa 1901 and South Africa 1902, that were issued latterly. There were three relief bars for the relief of uh, Ladysmith, the relief of Kimberley, the relief of Mafeking, and then the others were what we call battle bars, uh, because class was sometimes referred to as bars. So the battle bars were for individual battles, like Diamond Hill, Belfast, Yellens Larkta, Talana, etc. So the combination of these bars or, or clasps can be very, very interesting from a research point of view and from a collecting point of view. And to me, it's a fascinating medal and most certainly a very popular one with many, many collectors. Now, Queen Victoria died in January 1901, <coughs> excuse me, and she was succeeded by her son, uh, the Playboy King Edward VII. 
Well, the Boer War went on to uh, May 1902. And as I said, Queen Victoria died in January 1901. Edward decided that he should issue his own medal for the Boer War. It was quite a complicated award criteria because uh, to qualify for the King's Medal, the soldier had to be in South Africa at the end of the war and he must have completed at least 18 months of service. So, for instance, and as an example, a British soldier might have gone over in, in November 1899, served for a year, been wounded, he might have been sent back to the UK, and then once he'd been uh, sent back or released from hospital, he might have gone back to South Africa. As long as he was in South Africa from January to May 1902, and he could accumulate 18 months, he qualified for the King's Medal. So it, that's roughly the, uh, the award criteria, so it was quite complicated. There were two clasps in, involved with this medal, and normally it was always issued with the two clasps, South Africa 1901, South Africa 1902. You couldn't get the same clasp on both medals. Uh, so most of the guys who went over to South Africa with the colonials uh, signed up for 12 months. So most of the Canadians, Australians, uh, New Zealanders only got the Queen's Medal because they had to be there, as I said, for 18 months at least to get this medal. So that's the King's Medal. Uh, Edward VII on the front, or on the obverse, on the reverse, exactly the same as the QSA. Same, as, same design as the QSA. Now, the third medal in the Boer War uh, is the Transport Medal. Now, this is a fairly rare medal, uh, quite an unusual one, actually. It was issued to the captains and the first officers, or the senior officers, in the merchant ships. Now, these were the merchant ships that took the troops to South Africa and also the provisions, horses, provisions, etc. Uh, they were sparingly issued, so a ship might have had 16 people or a crew of 20. There would have only been two or three medals issued to the captain, uh, first mate, etc. Very rare, they were all named, as were the QSA and the KSA. Uh, there were two clasps involved for that particular medal, uh, South Africa 1899 to 1902 and China 1900 for the Boxer Rebellion because obviously many of the merchant ships went over to the Boxer Rebellion after South Africa. So that's the Transport Medal. Now another medal which was an official medal was the St John Ambulance Medal. This was actually uh, awarded by St John Ambulance to the members who went over to South Africa and served as nurses or as uh, uh, stretcher bearers in hospitals in South Africa. Also a very rare medal, they were also named, uh, as were all the Boer War medals. So very collectible, fairly rare and obviously fairly expensive for collectors. Now I'm going to talk about the unofficial medals. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is the Kimberley Star. Now the Kimberley Star, which we'll show you, I think is one of the most attractive medals uh, around. There we have it, it's a, a silver medal. It was awarded by the Mayor of Kimberley to all those troops who were involved during defence of the town of Kimberley. This was the diamond mining town where Cecil John Rhodes uh, was, was a big kingpin. He was there throughout the siege. We've talked about Long Cecil before in one of our videos. So these were awarded, as I said, by the mayor to all the troops, the colonials and some of the British troops, the Lancashire regiments that were there, uh, to all the defenders. They were made in silver. They were hallmarked at the back. There was an issue A, an issue B and an issue C. Uh, very uh, pretty rare medal. Uh, they were unnamed, but a lot of them were actually privately named. I've got one in my collection which is privately named, uh, the Kimberley Star. Now there was also a Kimberley Medal. That was uh, actually made, they designed it and made the medals, but unfortunately for them, they'd used the royal cipher without the approval of the monarch. So although they'd made some of the medals, they were actually, uh, they had to destroy them, they were melted back. There are a few that have survived, uh, but they're very, very rare and there are a few on the market. Okay, so that's the, uh, the other um, unofficial medal. Now, there was another unofficial medal. Um, we've talked previously in my videos about the invasions of the Cape Colony by the Boer generals. There was Herzog, there was De Wett, and by far the most important one, uh, most successful one, was by General Jan Smuts. Towards the end of the war, he invaded the Cape Colony. He uh, ran around some of the town guards, uh, got the, the British com completely confused, they had great big columns trying to chase him and he went right down almost to Cape Town in the Western Cape. He turned right and headed towards Namakwaland, which is a semi-desert region on the western side of South Africa. Well, there's a small uh, diamond mining town, I oh, beg your pardon, a small copper mine at a place called Oo Keep. And that was called the Cape Copper Company. Uh, as I said, the Boers attacked this little town and the, all the employees of the Cape Copper Company were armed and they uh, tried to defend the town, 
which they did do fairly successfully. It was only a month long siege from the 4th of May, 4th of April to the 4th of May 1902. The Boers never actually took the town, but towards the end of the siege, uh, peace negotiations, negotiations had already started. They called all the Boer delegates up to a place called Ferenachung and the Transvaal and the Fall River. And there was a big discussion between all the Boer commandos and, and the leaders and the, the, the actual officers of the various commandos as to whether they should continue the war or whether they should give up and sign a peace treaty, which is eventually what they did. So that was the Cape Copper Company medal. It was awarded by the Cape Copper Company as an unofficial medal. Once again, they were all named. Uh, a lot of the actual troops that got these were uh, coloured people. These are people of half of mixed blood who were working for the Cape Copper Company. They were also awarded the medal. And there were a few silver medals uh, issued to Lieutenant Colonel Shelton, who led the defence, and a few of the senior officers. So a very rare medal, uh, expensive on the market. But yeah, there's quite a range of interesting medals to collect for, uh, for the Boer War, and certainly a very interesting subject for medal collectors. Basically, that wraps up the, the British uh, awards that were given for the, the Boer War. Now I'll talk about the Boers. Uh, the Boers obviously lost the war. They were totally overwhelmed by the British. Um, there were 450,000 odd British and colonial troops in South Africa by the end of the war. And as I mentioned before, there were only 90,000 odd Boers who were fighting the, the British Empire. And 35,000 of those had been captured. 21,000 were still in the field by the, when they actually signed the peace treaty. Uh, because they lost the war, there was no medal for them. However, in 1910, uh, the, the Union of South Africa was formed. And that was made up by the Cape Colony, Natal, the two British uh, colonies, as well as the OVS, or the Orange Free State, and the Transvaal, the old ZOR Boer Republic. So the two Boer Republics, two British uh, colonies, were amalgamated together to, to cause the Union of South Africa. Now, in July 1912, the Union decided to start their own defence force. To get the defence force going, they had officers from both sides. So they had officers who had served uh, for the British or colonial forces, and they also had officers who would served for the Boer forces. And in 1913, uh, a course was being held in Bloemfontein, and a certain Colonel Skinner noted that all the Boer officers were in uniform, but they had no ribbons, whereas the British or South African uh, English-speaking officers were wearing the QSA or the KSA ribbons or both, but the Boers had nothing. So he wrote to Defence Headquarters and said, we really need to rectify this situation because these men are high-ranking officers and they've got nothing to show for their service. So uh, ideas are put forward, but unfortunately uh, for the Boers, the First World War broke out in August 1914. We all know the Great War lasted from November, uh, should I say August 1914, to the 11th of November 1918. Uh, there were three medals issued for the, uh, for the First World War, uh, mainly, which were these three here. Uh, many of the Boers, by the way, actually fought for the British during the First World War. So here we have a, a Boer medal with three medals for World War I. Now, the Boers, there were three medals involved with the Boers, and we'll talk about that now. The first one was the anglo Buddha Urloch Medal, which is the anglo Boer War Medal, and I'll refer to it as the ABO. You can see we have some over here behind me. Uh, it was a very interesting medal in as much as the one side of the medal had the ZAR coat of arms, and the other side of the medal had the Free State OVS coat of arms. So when these medals were awarded, which by the way, belatedly, was December 1920, so we're talking about 18 years after the war had ended. <clears throat> By that time, many of the Boers had passed on. Some of them were living on isolated farms, never even got to hear about it. And at the end of the day, there were only 13,800 odd medals awarded out of the 90 odd thousand Boers who served. So as I said before, the one side of the medal is the OVS coat of arms, the other side is the ZAR coat of arms. The men who were awarded this medal, if you were a ZAR subject, you wore the medal with the green ribbon to the left and the ZAR coat of arms in the front. Conversely, if you were an OVS uh, citizen or burger, you'd wear the medal with the OVS coat of arms in the front and the yellow to the left. So an interesting medal, <coughs> excuse me, they were all made of silver like the QSA and the KSA. They were all named and they had the initials and the surname of the, of the burger or the officer. Unfortunately, they didn't put the, the name of the commando down so there is a role and you have to check that out. If you have possibly three men with the same initials and surname, you've got a bit of a problem. 
But yeah, that's the Anglo Boer War Medal. Um, there was a very, very stringent award criteria. Uh, what they had to do, and we'll show you a form. There was a form B or a form B, which they had to fill out. And on this form, they had to state their name and address, their rank, as in a burger or a corporal, the commander that they served in, the officers that they served under, and that might be two or three officers, and then the battles that they would took part in. So they'd have to put down Colenso, Spion Cop, uh, Diamond Hill, whatever the case may be. All of these had to be written down on this application form. It had to be approved by an officer who knew the man, who, who possibly served in his commando. And then it also had to be vetted by three other men, up to three other men, uh, who'd obviously served with the burger and who could verify that the guy, yes, had been in action. People who had put up their hands, who were called henshoppers, um, were automatically disqualified. There were also some Boers who were called joiners, and these were the guys who'd uh, decided that the Boer War wasn't going to work out. The Boers couldn't, they couldn't win, so they decided to join the British forces. And these guys were, were hated and despised by the other burghers, as you can imagine. They were used mainly as guides and scouts, uh, because obviously they knew all the tactics of the Boer commandos, and they were very useful to the British uh, troops, because um, towards the end of the war they could help track down these Boers because they knew their tactics. As I said, they were despised by the, the, the rest of the Boers, and obviously they weren't allowed to claim a medal. So it was a very stringent process. There were many men who did apply, but they weren't approved. So that's the anglo Boer War Medal. Unfortunately, there were no clasps, but once again, from a research point of view, like the QSA with the 26 different bars or clasps, uh, conversely with the ABO, uh, the form that they filled out can give you so much information that, you know, as I said, the battles that they fought, fought in, uh, the officers they fought under, so you can actually go in and read about where the battles were, who, who the officers were in charge, what commanders were there, etc. Very interesting to research. In addition to the um, ABO medal um, uh, and the Form B, there was another Form C, and this was called the Wound Ribbon, or the LVW. That's Lint für Wunden, or Lint für Verwunden. Basically, in English, translates to wound, a ribbon for being wounded. Uh, it was the same scenario. They had to fill out a form, which is called a Form C. On the form, they had to put down their name, uh, address, their rank, the commander they fought in, the officers they fought under, where they were wounded and when they were wounded, and the officer who had actually witnessed them being wounded uh, was, had to be signed for on, on this form. So once again, quite a stringent um, award criteria. There was no ducking and diving. It had to be verified. But it was different in as much as there was only a ribbon. There was no actual medal, which seems rather strange. And when you see a set of medals, uh, he might have had uh, the DTD, which I'll talk about, the ABO, and, and the wound ribbon is just the ribbon, nothing else underneath. Uh, the men were awarded a certificate uh, with a strip of ribbon at the top and the man's name, stating that they'd actually been wounded. So that was the LVW. Now, I didn't talk about decorations for the British troops, but I am going to talk about a decoration for the Boer troops because they only had a few medals. In addition to the ABO, the Boer War Campaign Medal, there was a DTD, and that's a Decorati for Trovedienst, or the Decoration for Faithful Service. Very, very loosely uh, aligned to the DSO, the British Distinguished Service Order. It was for leadership and also for courage, either or, or both. Uh, they were mainly issued to officers. Uh, like the ABO, it was in silver. Like the ABO, the one side had the coat of arms of the ZAR. And if, if it was a ZAR man, you would wear the, the green side of the ribbon first. Uh, and the other side was the OVS coat of arms. And if, if you were an OVS burger and you were given a decoration when you wore the medal, the yellow would be in front like this one here. This man was an officer in the OVS artillery. So that's the DTD Decorati for Trovedienst. Uh, they're very scarce. There were only 662 of these ever awarded. So mainly to officers, but certainly a few were issued to burghers. Not many, but there were a few warrant officers who qualified for the DTD. So basically, that's, those were the two medals for the Boer War. Now, I'm going to talk about one other medal. Uh, it's called the uh, Johannesburg Freiwilliger Corps Medal. Uh, that's the Johannesburg Volunteer Corps Medal. Now, this was pre-Boer War. Um, it was actually issued by the commanding officer. It was Lieutenant Colonel S. van Dijkelen, or van Diggelen, uh, van Diggelen in, in English. He was the, the actual creator or the founder of the Johannesburg uh, Volunteer Corps. 
JVC, and he struck this medal himself. He designed the ribbon, which is the colours of the uh, ZAI Republic flag, same colours, um, and it was given to his, his members. Now, there were two clasps involved with this medal. Unfortunately, I don't have one, but we'll show you a photo. Uh, there was one called Jamison Infall, which is the Jamison Raid, and the other one was uh, Swaziland, Expediti, uh, uh, Swaziland Expedition. That was for a, a campaign they had against the Swazi and African tribes. So that was the uh, Johannesburg Freiwilliger Corps medal. I've mentioned it because there certainly were several Boers who served in the JBC prior to the Boer War who had that medal and then went along to, to earn the uh, ABO and some of them got the DTD. It was from 1894 to 1899. Uh, and those dates are on the reverse of the medal. Quite a nice medal in the front of the medal, quite a large medal. The front had the obvious, I beg your pardon, had the ZOR coat of arms. So basically that's the story about campaign medals issued to the British and colonial forces as well as to the Boer forces. As I mentioned, this is a, a, a DTD medal issued to an officer in the OBS Artillery Corps. Quite a, quite a rare unit. Uh, there weren't many who were regulars uh, in the OBS and or the ZOR artillery. And I hope you've enjoyed the story. Thank you.